From the PS4 to the Nintendo Switch and to the beloved Wii U, we are giving them all attention today in this homebrew update. I'm your host, Troy. Let's get started. Starting off with the Nintendo Switch, we have actually quite a few things on this little handy device. The very first thing I'm going to talk about is going to be a in-progress switch emulator. Now this switch emulator will be able to run on your Windows or Linux or Mac, what have you. And it is going to be created by the same people who made the 3DS emulator Citra. Now currently this emulator doesn't run any games or anything like that because as far as I know there's only been one game actually dumped. but. The emulator does run homebrew, so for all the developers out there who want to make homebrew on the Switch, this will make it a little bit easier and probably a little bit quicker for you to run homebrew and start developing homebrew for the Nintendo Switch. They actually do have some screenshots of the space game that someone had made for the Nintendo Switch running on the emulator, and I'm sure you'll probably get, you know, Doom running on it, so yes, yeah, so it will probably run Doom. Next up, we have some small news about the team executor and their little exploit that they have. We did hear it will be a mod chip and also there's going to be two different versions. One is going to be a soldered one and another one will be a solderless one. So for other people who don't know how to solder, they can use that one. Now I personally am just going to keep on waiting for a free exploit to come out due to how big the Nintendo Switch scene has become and with everything else I just have a feeling there will be an alternate free version eventually. The ReSwitch team had been very, very busy the past couple months. As you know, they were able to get Trust Zone hacks on version 1.0 and 2.3. Well, now they can add 3.x or essentially 3. Point whatever, whatever falls in the 3. Point area of firmware. They now have the Trust Zone hacks for those as well, which is amazing. This doesn't say that, you know, because you want to play Mario Odyssey, you still don't show an update because it's always better to stay on lower firmware. Now I know as hard as that will be sound to say, just stay on lower firmware, it always is better, especially because right now version 1.0 is the only one who can actually have code execution in the trust zone area. Now this code execution is actually very very cool in the fact that from what I read it actually survives a reboot, meaning it's very potential for custom firmware. Also, the ReSwitch team has said that version 1.0 will probably be the first one to get actual homebrew on there. Granted, we kind of do have homebrew already, but like say actual custom firmware homebrew is what I think is what they mean. Yeah, the 1.0 will be the first one to get it, and then after that will probably be 2.3, and then probably 3.0. But that still is great news because that means the majority of the people on 3.0 will be able to run custom firmware whenever that comes out. And as I said, stay on the lowest firmware you can. Don't update for games. It's just bugs are fixed in the newer firmwares, so it makes it harder to actually do different things that you can't do in the older firmwares, if that made any sense. Have you even said that on the Wii U there hasn't really been nothing going on lately? Well, the developer HexYZ has actually published an article on his blog saying that there is a boot one exploit. Now, he actually didn't implement it, he didn't really release anything, he only released the actual article saying how you can do it and kind of what goes on to make it work. Now, the boot one exploit is essentially just another way to do a cold boot hack sheet. This is amazing news also because the cold boot hack sheet that there is right now is actually very liable to break because if you even just delete the game or you move it to an SD card or you move it to another external device or you format your Wii U, then you brick your Wii U as easy as that. The new way, the boot one exploit, will actually go off the virtual Wii. Uh, well, part of the virtual Wii. Right now, it says that they do know of a way to actually make it so you can still use a virtual Wii with the Cold Boot exploit, but they say there is a way to make it work. They just have to get it working. The reason why this is also great is since it hangs on to the virtual Wii, you can't delete the virtual Wii, whether you format it or anything like that, unless you actually use the FTP server to delete it that way, which if you do, then you're just, why? 
But yes, this version of the Kobu exploits, when it is actually released and in implemented, it will be um, awesome and I will probably be using it myself. Lastly, we have the beloved PS4. We have been seeing a whole bunch of homebrew coming out in the recent time, and today is no exception. We have the PS4 Homebrew Enabler. Now, what is that? Essentially, it's still the WebKit exploit, but it also adds a way to install package files from a USB drive. The package files are fake signed, so you have to actually run the WebKit exploit to even just run the package files, meaning once you install them on the PS4, you can't just say turn off your PS4 and then turn it back on and run a package file, you know, like say run a homebrew application that you actually installed. No, you can't do that, you have to run the WebKit exploit all the time first. But this is great news because that means one, we have fake signed package files. We could put homebrew straight onto the hard drive of the PS4. You don't have to, you know, push it over with an application from a computer. And this means that once game ROMs start getting dumped, you can also install those eventually. Whenever that can be, I have no clue, but I am kind of waiting on for it. I'm kind of seeing really where everything goes from here. I still actually have my PS4 in my closet still sitting there. I haven't taken now to even update from 3.55 to 4.05 yet. So, but yes, that actually reminds me, if you are on 4.05, do not update. If you are below that, you are able to update or, uh, well, you are able to update to 4.05, nothing higher. Or you could just be like me and wait for more stuff to come out before you do anything. And that's it for this episode, guys. There was actually quite a bit of stuff that came on this episode, and I really, really hope you guys did enjoy it. What was your favorite part about it, and what is the most thing you are excited for in the future? Guys, please, if you did like this video, hit that subscribe button as well as that like button and that little bell icon so that way you don't miss any videos that I post in the future. With that, guys, I will see you next homebrew update.